Hi guys, it's Ray with Ray's Turquoise Turtle. Today I am going to do um, two alcohol ink on glass, wine glasses. I'm just going to focus on the bottom third to a half of each of these. I'm not going to go all the way up to the top. Um, I have a blue, a pink, and a purple for one, and a red, orange, and yellow for the other. I'm not going to put a ton of epoxy on these, just a little bit, and pretty basic, pretty easy, um, enough that it can move, but not like crazy. Um, if you do too much, it'll end up pooling at the bottom, and your cup won't sit level, you'll be... Um, You'll be sanding for days to get a cup that'll sit. You really don't want that. If you're more comfortable taping off so you don't go too high, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to because I am notoriously bad at remembering to come back in and pull the tape. And I did just string a little bit there, but that'll clean off. So I'm not too worried about it. That's it. That's what I'm going to start with. Um, not measuring exact, just enough that I feel I'm good. These are Dollar Tree wine glasses. I always use these for all of my projects because I really love the size of them. A lot of wine glasses are just too small, but these are my fav favorite stemless to work with. Also by focusing on the bottom, you allow yourself room for a decal later if you choose. You don't have to seal a decal over glass, if you use a good quality permanent vinyl it will stay for years if cared for properly, so. This one's probably a little too much, so I'm gonna scoop a little bit back off. I did um, clean these wine glasses and then I uh, wiped them down with alcohol really well so they're good and clean. I'm going to get this pair of gloves off because I don't want to get ink all over my bottles any more than I already have. All of my inks are good. Or, yeah, I don't want to get epoxy all over my bottles. All of my bottles are getting very, very sticky already. So I'm trying to keep them a little bit clean or cleaner. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and start with the Tim Holtz ones. This is Glacier, Vineyard, and Gumball. I just gave them a quick shake. I'm going to open them up. And it's not going to take very much ink because it's such a small surface area. You don't want to over ink. So I'm just going to put a few drops on. And it's going to want to run to the bottom, which is fine because you do want some of it to go over the bottom. And I do want to watch this when it comes around because I do want to get that epoxy off. So I'm going to let that do its thing for a minute and wait for that little drip I got. I'm just going to wipe it with a baby wipe quick. It's easier to get it off while it's still wet. Alright, so that's my blue. I'm going to come in with the pink. And it is a little difficult to see what you're getting because of the filler in the center. Um, I have footballs crammed in here with a washcloth wrapped around it and a piece of non-stick like shelf liner 
And the pink and the blue already did make a purple, so I'm probably not going to add more than just a couple of drops of the purple. But that's all I need for ink. I'm going to let that one spin and start to mix on its own while I prep the next one. That way I can just heat them both at the same time. So, I'm going to go ahead and just get started. Same thing. And these colors are going to blend a little bit more because they are all more similar. Don't pick colors that are going to clash or look bad together. Like, avoid a combination like purple and green unless you're going to really keep them separate. Purple and green can get pretty ugly in a hurry. watching it come around. If you end up with any ink on the glass, don't worry about it because you can wipe that off with alcohol once it's done. So I'm going to go ahead and cap my inks, move them out of the way. Oh, these were Pixis. They all come in a box together. I had cherry, lemon, and carrot. I will put links to the Pixa set down below. Um, so I'm going to use my heat gun quick. This is my Wagner Inferno 550. It has multiple heat settings, multiple fan settings. Um, I'm going to use it on a pretty low heat and the highest fan setting. I just want to get it moving a little bit. Because you're working on glass, you don't really want to overheat it, overheat it. I just want to get it moving. And I'm not worried about bubbles on these. There's enough alcohol in the inks that it'll take the bubbles right out. And so you don't have to really concern yourself with that. I'm going to try and push some back up towards the top. Try and get a little bit of an irregular edge. I may come back in and add a little more ink in this one. I do have quite a few voids in this one, so I'm going to come back in with just the pink to start anyways. And actually, I'm going to grab the blue, but I'm not going to do any more purple because the purple is going to start to dominate. I'm just going to watch for those void spots. Like I said, it's a little harder to see on the glass. So you may end up missing more spots initially than you would on a stainless tumbler. Okay. So whoop. this is a multi-speed turner. I'm going to go ahead and tilt it up a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and hit it with the heat again while it's on tilt. This 
to try and encourage some upward movement. You have to keep in mind that epoxy doesn't like to go where epoxy hasn't gone. So it is difficult to get it pushed. Okay. I'm gonna do the same with this one. So what I said over that was that epoxy doesn't like to travel where epoxy hasn't been. That's why it's kind of holding the line of where I applied it. Um, it's what makes epoxy work for doming and things of that nature. So that's why this works and it doesn't run every which way to Sunday unless you've overdone it. But I don't like where that one little bit of purple went. So I'm going to catch that on its way by. I don't want this little odd thingy. But I'm just going to let these spin. I have one little thing in here. I'm going to try and catch also. Like a little dried flake of epoxy or something. So I might have a couple of them on this one. So I'm just going to kind of watch that as it comes around. I think that's exactly what it is, is a piece of dried epoxy from some other project. I try not to mix the purple in on this one. This is pretty warm, so hopefully it'll level itself out. I'm actually going to grab a little stick just break it in half. I'm actually going to stop the turner for a second because I really don't want those in there. They'll show. Okay, got that one. Let's see if I got the other one with my finger or not. Okay, I don't see the other one down here anymore. So that's it. I'm going to let them spin and I will show you how they look when they are dry. Okay, these are done and off the turner, so we'll take a look at them. This one does have a little void spot. Um, I could fix it with another coat if I want to. Um, or I may be able to just patch a tiny bit in. But I would probably do another full coat because it's pretty smooth. So, but you can see the little bubble spot there. But I really like the way it broke up overall. So, there's that one. And then this one. The purple kind of took over quite a bit, but that's nothing unusual. They just look really cool. They look really cool through the inside. Um, again, I keep it small to the bottom. That way I have room for some kind of a decal. So that's it. Epoxy on glass. Definitely doable. Give it a try.